raindrops coming. I was told years ago in Hawaii that rain is a blessing of Holy Spirit. So we, we see the good rain watering the garden, blessing the trees. We thank everybody who came out here today to be with us under the pavilion. We thank the music team and our guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Rob Fullwood. And we are setting intention this morning so I ask everyone to please take a deep breath and set intention with me that as we move into this week of November 1st, we bless our world, we bless our country, we bless our human family, we bless all life on this planet. And as <laughs> President Barack Obama said last night in a speech, whether you, no matter how we are voting, we all really must share this idea that we pray for a strong and fair and beautiful country where the entire community feels honored and respected, a strong, beautiful, fair, better country. We are living in days of transformation and so we set intention that we step up to these days we've been born to, to do our part for peace, for fairness, for strength, for our country and we give thanks. And we move into our Lord's Prayer which is translated from the Aramaic. Father, mother, birther, and breath of all, create a space inside of us and fill it with your presence. Let oneness now prevail. Your one desire then flows through ours as energy fills all form. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment and untangle the knots of air that bind us as we release others. Do not let appearances make us forgetful of the source, but free us to act appropriately. From age to age through you flow the glorious harmonies of life. May these words be fertile statements through which our future grows. Amen. And now we're going to have another song, which is Do All You Can. So that's another part of our intention these days, to do all we can with what we have, where we are, and with the time that we have. That's all any of us can do. So do all you can. Can you move that camera? <coughs> <coughs>
read our daily word for today, November 1st. The word is remember, and the affirmation is, I bless the people whose lives have touched mine. So let's all think of those beautiful souls in this moment on All Saints Day. Grandparents, parents, siblings, members of my extended family, teachers, friends, co-workers, Every person I've known has, by his or her example, helped me feel more deeply what it means to be human. Some have encouraged my curiosity. Some have taught me life skills. Some have modeled positive attitudes and behaviors. Some have loved me fully and unselfishly. And some have helped me learn to love even when loving felt difficult. Today I remember the people whose lives have touched mine. I pause to think kindly of each one as I savor memories of time we spent together. Whether we're still in one another's lives, have lost touch, or are separated by death, I know the experiences we have shared continue to enrich our lives and deeply bless us on our spiritual journeys. And that's the truth. <clears throat> I feel my mom and dad with me all the time. Yeah. And from Romans 1, 9, I remember you always in my prayers. So our daily word for today. So <clears throat> I was sharing with a few folks earlier that this week David and I were talking about how hard this moment can feel <clears throat> when we are in resistance. Uh, resisting the way it looks and so we've determined and I realized that the more I resisted the harder it felt about this moment we're living in so spirit got hold of me and said surrender simply surrender and so I don't see surrender as resignation or giving up I see surrender as accepting what is and accepting that we are born to this moment to do all we can with what we have and the place we are with the time we have. And so deepening into surrender, the great blessing and grace is that we stumble on gratitude. When we deepen into surrender, we move into gratitude. So I want to invite us to take a deep breath into that idea. We surrender to this moment that we're born to. We sur surrender to what it is. And we surrender to being available to spirit to do what is ours to do. <sighs> that feels good. So in one of my readings in 2013, I was inspired to write this. Surrender is a doorway, and it opens us up to the clear, undiminished beauty of our eternal nature. I wrote that at the Mayor Baba Center when I was there on retreat. Mm -hmm. Surrender is a doorway, and it opens us up to clear, undiminished beauty of our eternal nature. That is a blessing to me hope it is to you too. So we are going to move into our meditation song, I Send My Love, and then Reverend Dr. Rob Fullwood will bring us our meditation and our message, <coughs> Lessons from Hope, from Driving Miss Daisy, which I re-watched yesterday. Great film. Okay, let's get ready for meditation with a deep breath, gratitude, and our song. And because I printed the wrong song out and brought it to church this morning, oh. we are actually doing I Am Light. I Am Light, that's good too. Why should anything go as we planned this morning? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there we are, I Am Fine Light. Fine <laughs> Yes. Nice girl.
Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Why do I get the funny feeling that people are talking behind my back? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. I am basking in the afterglow of wonderful blessings. Uh, first of all, to my licensed Unity teacher class that is joining me here. Thank you so much for your support. And they are visiting with us as far away as Australia. So we are certainly thankful for them. This was our first week of uh, intensives, the first of three weeks. I am two steps away, uh, thank God, for becoming a licensed Unity teacher like my Shiro, <laughs> Margaret Hill. And speaking of Margaret Hiller, we are also celebrating uh, a wonderful uh, post-dialogue of James Baldwin's I Am Not Your Negro, wonderful uh, dialogue that we have had. And I'm um, thankful to Sister Margaret for allowing that to happen and to allow each of us to speak from our hearts. And speaking of hearts to heart, we want to recognize David and Margaret, 28 years of marriage. Let's give them another hand. 28 years. Wow. We believe in miracles. Hey! <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Uh, my mother, uh, Tuesday, turned 82 years young. So happy birthday, Mom. We love you. Yes. We love you, Mom. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you ever watch the Golden Girls, my mom is the black version of the mother <laughs> on the Golden Girls. Yes, yes. And yes, mom, I did shower before I got here. Okay. So, uh, Karen and, and the kids, uh, they send their love. Uh, Karen had a meeting in Columbia with Unity of Columbia. So, uh, hey, Karen, and hey, Ariana, hope you're behaving. So, as we get ready for today and our reflections and message, I want to turn your attention to the book of Luke, the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 17. And I will read it for you. And I'm reading the voice translation. Jesus placed his hands on her and suddenly 
she could stand straight again. She started praising God. But the synagogue official was indignant because Jesus had not kept their Sabbath regulations by performing this healing. The synagogue official said, look, there are six other days when it's appropriate to get work done. Come on those days to be healed, but not on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, you religious leaders are such hypocrites. Every single one of you unites his ox or donkey from its manger every single Sabbath day, and then you lead it out to get a drink of water, right? Do you care more about your farm animals than you care about this woman? One of Abraham's daughters, oppressed by Satan for 18 years? Can we untie her from her oppression on the Sabbath? As the impact of his words settled in, his critics were humiliated. But everyone else loved what Jesus said and celebrated everything he was doing. And I wanted to read that to each of you because I want you to join with me now, whether you want to stand or whether you want to sit, I want you to metaphysically envision this woman of affliction. For 18 years, so if you want to sit, try to go down as far down to your toes without falling, please, as far down to your toes as you can and feel the stretch. And as you are thinking about this stretch and you're closing your outer eyes, I want you to think about having to do this for 18 years. I want you to think about the burdens of the thoughts that you had this week that afflicted you for 18 minutes. Maybe you, You've had some issues for 18 days. Maybe in a previous life you represent a generation that had some stuff going on 1,800 years ago. As you are reaching down, I want you to metaphysically think about Jesus and your Christ consciousness touching you. And you slowly come back up because you are healed. You slowly come back up and you feel the heal. A change is coming. The evolution is happening. The evolution is possible. The afflictions end today. Amidst the rain, we have the sunshine of happiness and joy that goes beyond race, that goes beyond gender preference, that goes beyond political stances. Change, the evolution continues to happen. And so it is, amen. Because I love each one of you. I thought that rather than uh, go straight into our reflection, I wanted to give you two jokes. <laughs> one is Adam and Eve, and to my LGBTQ community, the other is Madam and Eve. <laughs> First, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had kids, and the kids went up to their dad and they said, Daddy, Daddy, why are we no longer in Eden? Why are we no longer in Eden? And he said, children, because your mama ate us out of house and home. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Madam and Eve. In this traditional sense, we call it Sunday school, but this was a different kind of school. This was a new thought Sunday school. And they were talking about Madam and Eve. And it was talking about the creation and how Eve came from Madam's rib. 
And then little Susie went on the ground and she started hurting her, holding her side. And she was holding her side. The teacher said, Susie, what is your problem? What is going on with you? And she said, I think I feel my wife coming on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Moving right along. I get it. Now that made you smile at least once. At least I hope so. Lessons from Hulk. Driving Miss Daisy gives a lot of sociological lessons and perspectives. And I'm happy to share them with you today. Society's human behavior and relationships determines the quality of all of our relationships. This is on display in one of my favorite movies, Driving Miss Daisy where Morgan Freeman is playing Hulk Coburn and Jessica Tandy is playing Miss Daisy Wortham. And each of them represent the cultural norms of the era, the interactionalist perspectives, Christian values, and tension between culture and Christian values being on full display throughout the movie. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The sociolo sociological theme that is most profound is the concept of aging. As a Quinn quadrinarian, I practice that on the way here, <laughs> meaning I represent someone in their 50s, I'm happy to see how today's generation is more health conscious. I just wish that all generations would become more spiritually conscious for the sake of humanity. Going back to Driving Miss Daisy, the interactionalist perspective is uniquely seen in both characters' age, their gender, and their geographical location. Hulk, the elderly black male driver, is working for an elderly white female that's a retired school teacher. And as the movie progresses, I was able to see how each character rep responded to life changes and cultural influences of the South, Atlanta, Georgia. I was also able to readily relate to many adjustments each of these characters made throughout the movie. As a black man, who grew up in the Bible Belt, I could relate to how Daisy expected Hoke to be on his best behavior regarding being the Southern gentleman. At the same time, as a person of color, I could relate to Hoke seeing himself to be less than equal due to the era this movie is depicted in. I now have a better understanding of how sociological aging theories affect us, how these theories predict the changes in roles and relationships for the older adults of this society. For instance, I mentioned my mom earlier in her birthday. I find myself handling my mother's financial affairs now the way she used to handle mine when I couldn't provide for myself. And as I watch this movie, remember I said the more things change, the more they stay the same. I couldn't help but think about today's generations. It seems like more children are acting like adults and more adults are acting like children. Miss Daisy re realized that despite her societal influences, despite her coming from high society, despite her educational background, despite all of these things, before, when she got in the car with Hulk, at that point, he was less than. But by the conclusion of the movie, she realized that Hulk mattered. Whoever you see in the mirror, you matter. 
So by the ending of Driving Miss Daisy, Hulk's character enhanced Miss Daisy. If Hulk was on Facebook, I would love to poke Hulk. <laughs> and if I were to poke Hulk, I would thank him for showing me what it means to talk loud even when you're not saying a word. If I were to poke Hulk, I would thank him for showing me how to choke hatred with love. As I poke Hulk, I know that I know that I know that a change is going to come. This change didn't come the first time Hulk was found driving Miss Daisy. It came over time. Sometimes change takes time. Even though it's been 400 years since oppression came to my people, the way I see it, I am 400 years closer to the world of diversity and inclusion. I challenge you to vote like your life depends on it. I didn't say your black life. I didn't say your white life. I said your life depends on it because it does. I challenge you to learn something new every day. I challenge you to love one another without needing to know who's sharing a bed with who. Even if it's not you. Newsflash, what people say about you is none of your business. <laughs> oh, one more hope poke. Driving Miss Daisy tells me that even the educated can learn from the not so educated. With age should come wisdom. In the words of Muhammad Ali, stop counting the days and make the days count. So as I turn the page from Driving Miss Daisy, during our intensive class, we were asked to do some journaling. And I did a journal, and I wrote a letter to Bobby and Martin. And I want to share it with you today. The subject is sociologically checking in. Dear Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King, hopefully this letter finds each of you continuing to enjoy your rightful place in enjoying the fruits of eternity from your earthly labors. I am writing you as I continue to keep hope alive that a better day is coming. I am happy to share that God continues to be good and active in everything, everywhere. I truly feel that God desires me to honor each of you for your lifetime of service for the pursuit of social justice. On a personal note, each of you are my namesakes, Robert, Martin, Fullwood. I'm sure you already knew that. Your leadership regarding civil rights was a wonderful example of Proverbs 31 and 9. Each one of you opened up your mouths. You judged righteously. You defended the rights of the poor and needy. I knew you were not perfect. History says that. But you are still my heroes. I continue to be naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. Thanks to social media, I can still hear your voices and be refreshed by each of you. Every time I hear each of you speak, you seem to speak from the depths of your soul. Ask not what your country can do for you. Oh, my bad. That's your brother, John. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, it was you that said back in 1966, I embrace that a revolution is coming, a revolution which will be peaceful if we are wise enough compassionate 
if we care enough, successful, if we are fortunate enough, but a revolution which is coming, whether we will it or not. We can affect its character. We cannot alter its in inevitability. Mark, as I cast my vote this year, three weeks ago, mind you, I did so with what you said in mind, to never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person or animal is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the hotter the furnace of life is, the more we can shine if we persevere. Just because we feel afflicted does not mean the healing is not possible. Our divinity will see us through. Bobby, your words inspire me to continue to create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. You said these words. Some men see things as they are and ask why. I dream of things that would never were and ask why not. Bobby and Martin, as I reflect on the sacrifices that each of you made, while you live with us 81 total years combined. I also want to give a special shout out to the pioneering women of 1920, Abraham Lincoln and Ronald Reagan. Thanks to each of the women that cast their vote for the first time 100 years ago, reminding us all today that the voices of women continue to be heard and should never be silenced. With the stroke of a pen, Ronald Reagan the Gipper signed the Martin Luther King holiday into law. And thanks be to God for Abe Lincoln. I name, I, thanks to you, Abe Lincoln, I can name my weariness, the existing government. I did my duty three weeks ago to exercise my revolutionary right to flip the script and change this world. I do and give my best by living the truth I know. I'm going to make a difference. Every eight minutes and 46 seconds of life that I have, I owe that much to George Floyd. James Baldwin's I am not, my, you, I am not your Negro challenges me to apply the words of Jeremiah 22 and 3. Thus saith the Lord, do justice and righteousness and deliver from the hands of the oppressor him who has been robbed and do no wrong or violence to the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. In Christ consciousness, I never lose because I refuse to lose. Just because I'm down doesn't mean I'm out. If I can look up, surely I can get up. And I wish that for each of you, my brothers and sisters. Hopefully each of you become less apathetic and more anointed and appointed by your place in history. In the words of the old Negro spiritual, this morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt that the Lord will take care of me that the Lord will provide for me, that the Lord will lead me and guide me all the way. In rain, in the sunshine, in season, out of season, no matter, God is with us. Every morning I wake up to honor Breonna Taylor. My plans are to do and give my best, living the truth I know. I make a difference. Even if I mess up, no matter how many times it takes, Sister Margaret taught me this, do it until you get it done right. Well, Bobby and Martin, I'm going to go for now. Thanks for taking the time out to hear my letter to each of you. I got to get back to class. Although we are living 
Under the new normal of social distancing, I promise to continue working for world peace. Although emotions of exhaustion are felt, we will continue to march on for social justice. I'm truly seeing how society's real identity is being revealed and how people are debating science versus politics. Dismantling any form of racial superiority begins with everybody as Hope and Miss Daisy eventually understood from each other as senior citizens. We can all learn, no matter how old we are or young. Only then will liberty and justice for all outlast the exhaustion of obtaining such equality. And as I close this letter to you, Bobby, and to you, Martin, I promise to continue to love until it hurts, and then to love some more thereafter, to lift my voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, to march on till victory is won. As we close our eyes, let us keep our heart space eyes on the prize. Victory is ours. No matter the results of Tuesday, let us vote our conviction. Let us live the truth we know, for the God we know, the divinity in each one of us. We are grateful, we are thankful, and so it is. Namaste. Namaste. So we're switching places here. It's been a funny morning, odd morning with uh, <coughs> so many technological issues. But the point is, we're eternal spiritual beings, and the issues have been greater than these. <laughs> this is simple compared to the work that we're called to. Rob, I appreciate your message and re-watching the film, Driving Miss Daisy. One of the most powerful moments was when Mr. Hoke was driving Miss Daisy to Temple. Miss Daisy's Jewish. So he's driving her to Temple and they approach the temple and the traffic's all backed up and there's sirens and they won't let him get near the temple. And Hope comes back to the car and he says, Miss Daisy, you can't go to temple today. And she says, why not? And he said to her, Miss Daisy, there's been a bombing of the temple. And Miss Daisy said, who would do such a thing? And Hope said, Miss Daisy, you know it's always the same ones who bomb our churches and our temples. Mm -hmm. And they drove away and they were silent all the way home, both of them in their own thoughts. As a Jewish woman, her temple had been bombed and as a black man, Hoke knew all the stories of the churches that had been bombed. And in that moment, they were in oneness, a shared experience of the unkindness launched towards them because of their faith, their race, so I'm so grateful that we're living in a day when we can speak of these things even more and when we can open our eyes and see more clearly and more honestly and more truthfully what's been going on in our country. And I heard the argument one more time last week, why are we still talking about this? Slavery was over 150 years ago. The Unkind actions have never stopped, my friends. The unkindness towards people because of their color or because of their religion, that unkindness has been in the world all along. So I give thanks that I'm a part of a spiritual movement that teaches unity as a divine idea that's possible in the world. Oneness and unity is possible in the world. What it requires of me and you is to be very honest and to do what we can with what we have, and that sure does include 
vote for a kinder, stronger, more peaceful, more honest, more just society in our beautiful country of America. So we have uh, three groups that we are supporting with our tithes from this church and with donations of non-perishable food, and that is South Strand Helping Hands, that is Help for Kids, and that is Family Justice Center. You can take your donations directly to those places or bring them to the Surfside building. We'll make sure that those deliveries happen. Please, non-perishable food only. Last week I found some perishable food in the hallway of the church. So, non-perishable food. Also, starting next Sunday, every second Sunday, there's going to be healing work happening out here at Salem Road, Thai yoga massage and Reiki sessions. So next Sunday is November 8th. That'll be the first Sunday that this happens. It will be at Salem Road. You can see all the information at our Unity Facebook page and the phone number's there to call and make your appointment. David and I will be making our appointments. Sounds wonderful. Also, our speaker next Sunday is Reverend Marilyn Maddox, and she will be bringing us a message about peace. And we sure do need peace in our world today. Peace, peace, peace. We thank you for your tithes, your donations, your volunteer work. Uh, we It takes a whole community to create this experience that we're having called Unity Myrtle Beach. Remember, keep hope alive. And despite technological issues, we are strong, we're steady, we are present to our calling to be a part of creating oneness in the world today. We're going to have one more song, Let There Be Peace. And we hope that you have a beautiful week we hope that this week for you and for our world is one that brings healing, transformation, and wonder. Namaste. 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 Blessings.